You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. President Joe Biden does not have his United Nations ambassador yet because Senator Ted Cruz has been asked. Last week, uh, the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee, uh, they actually chose to delay the vote on United Nations Ambassador appointee Linda Thomas-Greenfield. Why? Because Ted Cruz did not like a speech that she gave at Savannah State University in 2019. Thomas-Greenfield gave the speech at the Chinese-funded Confucius Institute on campus regarding China's relations and investments in Africa. Now, although she says she regrets her comments, Cruz and several other GOP senators rehashed the speech and questioned Thomas Greenfield's approach on the threat of China. The committee is slated to reconvene uh, to reconsider her role. Now, here is this fool, Ted Cruz. Watch this. So you've said you were horrified by seeing firsthand what the Confucius Institute was doing. Did you keep the money? Uh, I can tell you what I did with the money. Uh, I give a tremendous amount of my very meager resources to humanitarian efforts. And so you did keep did. the money, though. You, you didn't did. give it back. I, I did. I did not give it back. It was not from the Confucius Institute. It was from Savannah State University. Now, you also describe, you said you've spoken out against China's abusive practices. Um, perhaps you have elsewhere. Uh, but I can tell you I'm holding the speech you gave at the Confucius Institute and I can't find a single word of criticism in this speech. This speech is cheerleading for the Chinese Communist Party. You praise the Belt and Road Initiative. You praise their entrapping developing countries uh, in debt bondage. And you say the United States should follow China's model. Is it the role of America's UN ambassador to be cheering on the Chinese Communist Party at the expense of the developing world and at the expense of America? Uh, Senator, it was not my intention, uh, nor I, do I think that I cheered on the uh, Chinese Communist Party. Uh, what I recommended in that speech is that Africans need to open their eyes on how they deal with the Chinese. And I would like to see the United States government do more in Africa to compete with uh, the my, my, my final question, did, did you have even a word of criticism about the Chinese Communist Party, about its murders, about its tortures, about its concentration camps, about its genocide? Did you have even a word of criticism in the speech you gave at the Confucius Institute? Uh, I spoke about human rights there. Uh, that's the speech, but you don't see my other engagements uh, with students who ask questions that I answered frankly. And uh, I don't ignore human rights. I talk about the fact that Africans like but, but our But in value. this speech, did you address human rights? I did. Human rights is referred to as something that we promote in the United States. W what did you say about human rights that in speech? That are our values. W what did you say I, about I mean, in my discussions with, uh, with Africans. But, but the I speech appreciate didn't what you're saying. I'm not denying this. As I said, I regret this. I, you know, this is one speech in my 35-year career, and I do regret that speech, but if you look at what I have done prior to that, there is no question that I understand I am not at all naive about what the Chinese are doing, and I have called them out on a regular ba basis, including today. Thank you. Sir Nicole Book of New Jersey did not quite like Ted Cruz keep harping on his speech at an HBCU, and he had her back. So good to see you uh, here Thank today. You. I, I uh, watched the whole um, hearing on, on uh, my television in my office and uh, was really appreciative with, with generous spirit on both sides of the aisle and the substance of the question. I, I did hear one colleague, though, uh, refer to Biden administration's uh, nominees as embracing China. I think was that, that was the exact wording. And I found that just patently unfair and untrue. And then I heard one speech being taken in a way that was patently offensive to me at a moment that we just had a siege on the Capitol. And I would actually say that of all the members here, 
of this committee, there's not one that doesn't have something in a speech in their past that they regret doing, as this person has said, especially at a time that we see people whipped up to storm a Capitol and the perpetuation of baseless lies that an election that was won by seven million votes was a fraud. And so I'm, I'm particularly galled <laughs> that in the spirit of bipartisanship, which we usually have, that you were uh, treated like you were recently about one speech that you had already thoroughly explained to numerous members. And the generosity of some of my friends on the other side of the aisle was pointed very clearly. You were invited to give a speech by an HBCU. Now, some of my colleagues might not know this. I have buckets of invitations of speeches where I get speech invitations that I prioritize. If you're a New Jersey university, you got me. <laughs> if you are one of my alma maters, you got me. But when I get a call from an HBCU, I would imagine to the nominee, you know the sacred importance of HBCUs. You know that they are the number one producer in America of black generals, number one producer in America of black doctors, number one producer in America of black professors, PhDs, and so forth. In fact, if there is a hope for this country ever to reach equality in all the ranks of all the professions, would you agree with me that the HBCUs are still that hope? Without a doubt, Senator, thank yeah. you very much. Yes, and, and as a person who is the, has two generations before me going to HBCUs, the fact that you accepted an invitation from a black college <laughs> to give a speech, to me, shows that you have the right priority list, because I will tell you this, our State Department ranks are woefully lacking in African Americans. When I travel the globe and visit embassies, they are woefully lacking. We are now at a period where we've had a, a black vice president, first woman as well, first woman treasurer, you are one of the generations of women that are breaking down barriers and showing the way for women and African Americans. I, I imagine your commitment to continue to do that is the same, yes? Absolutely. Now, the other thing that just galled me a little bit, it was the fact that Senator Menendez, my senior senator, who is friend and mentor to me, read a whole list through your research, Senator Menendez, of examples for I think 10 to 20 years of you being a canary in the coal mine making warnings about China, China's activities in Africa. And so to the Senator Menendez, who I rarely ever tell him what to do, so I'll ask him, could you introduce that litany into the record in a formal way so that it is there forever? I'd be happy to. Thank you very much. So I just want you to know I am celebrating that you are sitting before me right now because I know the challenges we still have in this country. And I watched after George Floyd was savagely murdered, how it wasn't just all 50 states of America that came out and protested, but we saw other nations, right? At least a dozen other countries, because they know that the United States of America, if we can make our values true here, there's hope for the world. Would you agree with that? Yes, sir. So I, I have 30 seconds left, and I apologize for using all my time, uh, but I just want you to know, for my ancestors, for communities of color all around the world who wonder if this nation will ever achieve itself, will ever get to a point where we can be a country where we celebrate the richness of our diversity, not just in words, but in positions of leadership, where we achieve our potential, as past generations saw when they brought hidden figures out of the shadows and sat them together with NASA astronauts and literally defied gravity, that you today, sitting in that seat, are a reason to rejoice. And your record is unapproachable in your patriotism to this country under Democratic uh, uh, and Republican administrations. I thank you, I celebrate you, and I will submit my questions for the record in hopes that you will give me that response. I yield to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So, Michael, here's why I am greatly, greatly bothered here. Um... The first thing is, the, 
the Americans love to talk smack about China mm-hmm. and how we're so concerned about what China is doing in Africa. And Thomas Greenfield said, I would like to see America do more. I, I remember when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State. And she was cautioning African nations about accepting money for investment for China. And I'm sitting here going, well, it ain't like the United States is coming to the table with $100 billion for Chinese nations. Now, let me be real clear. I am not defending how the Chinese, in many cases, have raped African nations. Right. But when... Other countries are coming with nothing. You're basically saying to African nations, hey, y'all on your own. They're going to cut those deals with China. And so, Cruz, show me where you want to put a bill forth for the United States to invest in African nations. It's not going to happen, Michael. Uh, I don't think uh, Ted Cruz is doing that. And I think Ted Cruz is just trying to be an obstructionist. OK, I think he's just trying to be an obstructionist. But, you know, is 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 not. See, Ted Cruz is a is a very um, interesting but unlikable person at the same time, because <laughs> this is this is this is the guy who more like than he is Trump insulted his wife. Donald Trump insulted his wife. Right. And but then Ted Cruz continues to carry Donald Trump's water. And Ted Cruz was at the Stop the Steal rally January 6th inciting the insurrectionists. He was there. So, you know, I'm glad you showed Senator Cory Booker putting everything in the context. And really, it was a underhanded backhand slap at Ted Cruz also with with, uh, what uh, uh, Senator Cory Booker was saying as well. But, you know, Ted Cruz is, you know, he was reelected... uh, I think two was it two years ago? Two years, yeah, yeah it was in uh, 2018. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. B- well, b- beat uh, beat uh, one by two point five, one by two point five points uh, right. against uh, uh, Beto O'Rourke. Right. So he had he has four years. He has four years left, and I think maybe it's a good chance after that insurrection that took place. I think maybe it's a good chance that they could get him out of. Uh, uh, get him out of that Senate seat, but yeah, Ted, Ted Cruz is in he Ted Cruz is in no position to try to take the moral authority on this and try to check that sister like that. No, no, he's not. For me, Rob is where it's problematic. Where again, if you're the United States and you want to talk trash about what some other country is doing and their influence on African nations, step the hell up. I mean, yep. those African nations are more than happy uh, to accept uh, investment from from America. But you can't talk trash about somebody else and then you do nothing. Yeah, it's actually reminiscent of some of our past, you know, when uh, African nations had to rely on Cuba, the Soviet Union, you know, South Africa just to survive. And people were saying, well, why didn't Nelson Mandela and all those people accept help? Because they were in they were in a fight for their freedom. They don't care what, what the nations call themselves. It's about making sure they survive. Africa, same thing. So, I mean, it's so easy to criticize these nations, but I find it really, really hypocritical. Second, as we're talking about hypocrites, I want to just, I want to talk about Ted Cruz because this man just defended, he, he was defending a whole philosophy we, we know to be false. If you got a chance to see this, uh, uh, this uh, lawsuit that was filed by Dominion, the voting machine, it's just, it's just such a great line. Right. Uh, it's one of the best openings. It says, you know, the earth is round, two plus two equals four, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are president of the United States. These are facts. They're undisputed. The election wasn't rigged. It's just as true as the earth being round, two plus two equals four. But you have people like Ted Cruz promoting this propaganda, getting people riled up, believing that things are being taken from him, uh, that, 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 that the nation was rigged, that they have something to fight for. He is just as responsible for, uh, as Trump because he's in, he empowered that rhetoric. He's still not going to hold them accountable. So I don't want to hear anything from a lot of these people. They, they've lost their right to any type of moral high ground to me for a very long time. I don't want to hear it. Uh, and, and that's really for me right there, Amisha. I don't want to hear a damn thing from Ted Cruz or any of these people <laughs> because also I don't want to hear you even having the audacity, the unmitigated goal uh, to question uh, China and their human rights abuses when you literally were going to, you were supporting people who wanted to overthrow this country. That's, no, that, that's treason. That's, tra- that's being a traitor. 
Ted Cruz has been an echo chamber for QAnon conspiracy theories for a long time now. He stood out and he helped to not only amplify their voices, but he also pushed those conspiracy theories that he himself knew were false because they helped Republicans fundraise. He also did it because it allowed for the, the outgrowth of those rallies and pushing people out. And, and like you said, the insurrection that we saw just a few weeks ago. Ted Cruz also cannot personally speak to or engage in any level about humanitarian crises. This is the same guy who voted for and supported President Trump as he pulled out of um, various treaties that we've had with country with, with nations that we relied upon, not only in terms of fighting for you know humanitarian efforts globally, but also in terms of uh, funding. I think that it's very upsetting when we see someone like Ted Cruz speak against um, speak against a nominee who happens to be a black woman. And I think that this is largely because she would be a first and she is a black woman. Let's not forget this is also Black History Month, so it's a double slap in the face. But this is uh, the same Ted Cruz who himself has, again, stood by while America pilfered the resources of various uh, African nations. This is the same Ted Cruz who stood by and voted for the United States pulling out of humanitarian regards for various countries in Africa. So no, he doesn't care about Africa. He also does not, this is a Republican talking point, all things China, 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 China. And they're trying to link in any given way something that can dissuade, um, that can dissuade voters who do not understand that Democrats have no true alliance to China. I think that somebody accepting a speech, because Republicans, if we pull out the docket, Republicans have spoken everywhere for private sector organizations. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you swear, <laughs> you, I mean, you, me. you swear Biden and Hillary, like Democrats in love with China. First of all, how many of these Republicans are doing business in China? How many of Trump them? Himself. How many of them are selling their products there? How many of them? I mean, I, right. right. I'm like, y'all, come on now. They made a bunch of. Yep. I mean, they're all full of it. They're all full of it. They're just such great marketers, though. What I what I have to give Republicans is they know how to market some shit, boy. They can make up some stuff and make people believe it. And they just make it up. I guess they have to be because their policies are so bad. But, the, boy, we need to take a class in their marketing because they know how to do this. They really do. Yeah, no, they they, they, they real good with the line. They real good with the line. <laughs> Every single night. We've got some of the top black experts. You're not going to see them on cable news or broadcast news because you swear black people aren't experts when it comes to this health crisis. That's why we have this show and why we do what we do every day on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Joining us right now is retired General Russell Honoré, the nation's first black surgeon general, Dr. Jocelyn Elders, John Hope Bryant, he is the founder of Operation Hope, Senator Kamala Harris of California, Dr. Sadrina Calder, retired General Lloyd Austin, Congresswoman Karen Bass, Commissioner Omari Hardick, Bureau President in Brooklyn, Eric Adams, Dr. Joseph Graves, America's Wealth Coach, Deborah Owens, Dr. Corey Abair, Patel Salt. Uh, how University should do. Pastor Jamal Bryant, a uh, doctor, uh, Christy McDowell, Benja Ajilore, senior economist at the Center for American Progress, Gilda Daniels, again, author of the book, The Crisis of Voter Suppression in America. Four stars, uh, General Kip Ward, Dr. Oliver Brooks, is president of the National Medical Association, the president of the American Medical Association, Dr. Patrice Harris, Joby Benjamin, Dr. Alexia Gaffney, infectious disease specialist, Dr. George is Benjamin, uh, executive director of the American, American Public Health Association, Malcolm Nance, family medicine physician Dr. Jen Caudle, Dr. Tashaka Cunningham, a molecular biologist, Kat Stafford. She's a national race and ethnicity reporter for the Associated Press. Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick, uh, who is the president of Howard University, Congresswoman Yvette Clark uh, from the state of New York, William Spring, AFL-CIO economist, uh, Andrea James, executive director of the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls. All right, let's go to Capitol Hill. Congressman Gregory Meeks, Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson of Texas, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Minnesota Senior and Amy Klobuchar, mental health clinician, Jamie Singletary, Prince George's County State's Attorney, Aisha Brave Boy, as well as Dylan uh, Harry, ACLU Justice Division strategist of Dr. Cindy Duke. Uh, she is a virologist, Principal Steve Perry of Capital Prep. Health and wellness specialist, Dr. Yolandra Hancock, Desmond Mead, President of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, Cliff Albright, who is the co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Michael Harriet with the group, the Mina McWhorter, founder of Love by the Hand of Dr. Julian Malvo, economist president, Merida Bennett College, Coroner Michael Fowler, is the mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottoms, mental health therapist Suzette Clark, Justin Gibney, attorney and political strategist, and Bishop Vincent Matthews Jr., Dr. Suzette McKinney, 
CEO and Executive Director of the Illinois Medical District, Dr. Leon McDougal, President-Elect of the National Medical Association, Jana Bailey. Mayor of Moss Point, uh, Mississippi, uh, Mario King. We're going to keep driving this thing to make sure our people are fully aware, safe, protected from coronavirus. You're getting the top medical experts, the top business experts, top political experts, top religious experts, because that's why we do what we do unapologetically and unfiltered. Ain't nobody else in the black media space doing what we do. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.